Why is it so hard to get a theatrical agent? You've got the talent, you've got the headshots, you've got the reels, you've got the proof that you can book jobs. Yet still, it's notoriously hard to get a theatrical agent. Now, I wish I had the answer to this question. It's quite befuddling. I don't have an answer. I've had three theatrical agents over the past 10 years. I left my last agent in 2021, which begs the question, Tawana, if it's so hard to get a theatrical agent, why leave? Well, that's a topic for another day. There are many reasons why we have to leave an agent or sometimes we get let go, which hasn't happened to me, but I know people who have been dropped by their agents. And while it can feel crappy, it's usually metrics and it's not personal, but I have good news. After three years of not really trying to get an agent, I'm excited to share that I recently signed with one. Yay! And I'm going to share my experience with you in two parts. So this is part one of an agent meeting series. And in this part, I'll talk about how I got the meeting and how I prepared for the meeting. And a little bonus I'll share are my personal, my personal list of agent questions that I don't think most actors know to ask. And then in the next video, part two, I'll go over the offer and the contract. Let's start with how I got the meeting in the first place. And it's always said that a referral is the best way to get an agent meeting. And that's exactly how I got this meeting. One of my longest friends from New York to LA signed with a theatrical agent earlier this year. Turned out her print agent opened a theatrical department and that's how she signed with a new agent. And so I was a little apprehensive at first because I didn't see how a print agent could make the transition to theatrical agent. Like, would they know what they're doing? But my friend explained the agent's background and who was also assisting in the office. So I thought it was at least worth taking a meeting. Besides, this is LA. People change positions quite often and do so successfully. So who am I to judge? Now, I didn't jump at the opportunity right away. I had a trip planned to New York. So I thought maybe I should wait until I come back. I mean, it was summer. There was nothing really going on. Very little production anyway. And I always think better when I go home. There's something about being around unconditional love and getting out of the Hollywood air, the zeitgeist. But you know, actually there really wasn't anything to weigh. It was just a meeting. And if I could take the meeting, I could make a decision based from there. So when I returned to LA, I emailed my friend asking if the offer was still on a table. She said yes. And three weeks later, the agent contacted me. Now, does this happen to you? When you get an agent meeting, do you feel like how am I supposed to prepare? I mean, I don't get a lot of practice at taking meetings, so it always throws me for a loop. And I should probably talk to some of my more established actor friends to find out how do they take a meeting? Because at this point, those friends are taking meetings in teams and it would be actually really good to learn how they go about preparing for a meeting. The one thing I do know is research. Like I become an FBI profiler or a jealous girlfriend. <laughs> Like everybody, I start with a Google search and I'll go through every listing and every Google page. I'm looking for accolades, rumors of scorned actors, bad business reports. Do they owe any actors money? Are they sexual predators? I need to know what I'm getting into. And I used to watch for like interviews of, um, uh, of agents, but I don't do that anymore because I find that I become infatuated with them. And so by the time I take the meeting, I learned that what I saw in an interview may not be what they are in person or vice versa. And it just puts a bad, it puts me in a bad space. So I leave those interviews for later. The next thing I do is I review their IMDB page and I check to see if the actors on their roster have current credits. But in this case, most of their actors were models. So there was really nothing to research. So I knew that I would have to rely heavily on the meeting, focusing on the questions that I would ask, their demeanor, their personality, if they got my brand, if they were eager about me and what I bring. And it had to be respectful because respect is everything. As I got closer to the meeting date, I started to prepare an outfit. Now in my early days, I would go out and buy a whole entire outfit. I think one time I even wore an entire business suit, like I was going to a business meeting. But nowadays I really just try to shop from my closet. It's just easier for me to wear clothes that I'm that fit me, that I'm com comfortable in and confident in. Now there are many ideas and schools of thought on how to dress for a meeting. I think it's best to just dress like yourself on a good day, whatever that means to you. However, I don't think agents respond well to dingy t-shirt jeans and flip flops. But this is LA, sometimes that's someone's character and that's usually what they all that they have in their closet. So I can't judge, I can only worry about 
what works best for me and you should worry about what works best for you. I knew it would be a warm summer day, but because the office is in El Segundo where it's cooler than LA, I opted to wear a simple tank top with my stylish wide leg light wash jeans from The Gap, cantaloupe colored blazer from Uniqlo, and for my feet, because I was taking the Metro to El Segundo, my rust colored Adidas sneakers. My car was in a shop waiting for a part, and since I'm a New Yorker and I am no stranger to public transportation, I took three buses and it was actually a really smooth uh, commute and I was able to have a clear mind and think about what I would, my process when I got to the office. The office was inside of a WeWork, which was actually really refreshing because it was outside of the Hollywood TMZ zone. It was um, very airy, it wasn't stuffy. The agent had a corner office that was beautifully decorated in these neutral palette, like golds and creams, like on Instagram, like one of my favorite Instagram aesthetic pages. And they were thrilled and upbeat to meet me. They came from behind their desk to shake my hand. I was able to be myself and not try to tap dance or impress. I just had enthusiasm. And so I asked them questions like, how long they've been an agent, how they got their start, what they went to school for, where they grow up. Do they have siblings? Are they married? Do they have kids? What casting directors do they have good relationships with? How they handle roles that don't align with their talent's values, their approach to contract negotiations. And in this case, I was wondering what was the impetus to even start a theatrical division in the first place? I tend to avoid questions like, how many auditions do you think you can get me? Or uh, how many people do you have like me on your, on your roster? I think questions like those, like, well, first of all, an agent can't really answer how many auditions they're gonna get you because it's a gamble, it's trial and error. They don't really know the answer to that question. The best thing that they can say is that they're gonna submit you to the best of their ability. So that's like a waste of time and a waste of, um, of, of, of a question when you could ask something that's a little bit more thoughtful. And the reason why I don't ask like how many people like me they have on their roster is because usually you can go on IMDB and you can look at their roster and see who's on their roster. But nonetheless, while it's nice to be the only person like you on their roster, most times that's not the case. Most times they have like three to four people that are similar, that seem like you, but we're all different. We all have very different personalities and different approaches to life and, and different vulnerabilities and how we show up and professionalism. So I try not to get too caught up in how many people someone has on their roster like me. Just go to IMDB, look for yourself, but use the question time to really ask things that you really wanna know that are business oriented so you can have an idea of who you're gonna be partnering with and collaborating with. Agents want to rep professionals, professional actors, and actors wanna be rep by agents that are great at their business, building relationships, negotiating, respect respectful, and understanding our niche. But ultimately, we both just wanna work with someone who's sane. So you can't always tell that right away, and we're taking a gamble, but you can discern a lot of things in the meeting and you figure out what it is that you want to, uh, what why it is that you would want to work with this person just as they're figuring out the same thing. Here are the lessons learned. Use your connections. Don't be shy about asking your peers for a referral. Leverage your network. Take your time. It's okay to think things over before you commit. Be authentic. Let the agent meet the real you and ask questions you truly want to know the answers to, not questions you think that they would like to have you ask. You have no idea what's in their mind. So this is your time. Take care of yourself. And also no bully energy. If you start feeling like uneasy in the meeting, like this is somebody that's making you feel inferior or subservient, that's probably an intuitive hit that says this is not going to be a good match. But that's not what happened in this meeting. Overall, I felt really good about, about you know our conversations and the possibility of working together. And I like the idea that this is a new agent who's somebody who's embarking on a new area. Sometimes agents who have been doing this for a very long time, they think they know everything. And that's not to say that they don't because experience is experience. It is what it is. However, 
I found that there are some agents that I work with that treat me like a carbon copy of all their other actors, meaning they don't really cater their agenting to my persona. I say all that be to, to express that having this new agent who is starting a new theatrical department coming from a different division is going to be bright eyed. They're going to be learning along the way. Hopefully we can grow together and we can have uh, a relationship that lasts the entirety of my, of my career. That's what I like. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. I know a lot of times actors think, oh, I just need an agent and then I'll get all these opportunities. That can't be further from the truth. I'd say contrary to what some think, it's not just about getting any agent. It's about finding the right person who believes in you and supports you and is a good partner in growing your career. So that's the end of part one. Be sure to come back to part two, the agent meeting series, where I'll talk about the five reasons why I accepted the agent's offer and the signing process. FYI, I get asked quite often if I can do one-on-one -on -one coaching with actors. So yes, if you are looking for personalized guidance on your acting journey, from audition techniques to career strategies, I'm here to help. I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions tailored to your specific goals. And you can find all of my details at my website at tawanafloyd.com. I think it's forward slash acting lessons learned, but it's on my website. In the meantime, check out acting lessons learn the podcast, and I'll leave you with some other videos here on the screen that you may find helpful until next time or part two subscribe. Bye.